Now here we go. Now one last thing before we start recording. Here's what I'm going to do with the Sonic movie's history. I'm not going to go around reading the entire scripts and plots or anything like that. Like last time, I've been dragging on for about three hours. I'm going to cut it shorter for this version. All right. Like, I'm just going to talk about, like, how it went down, like, the whole thing went down, and how, why I think it looks, sounds awful or whatever. I'm not going to read any plots or anything stupid like that, because that'll take forever. I'd rather just do it off the top of my head and just go a little bit of list on why. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, that sounds, uh, that sounds like that work. All right, you ready to record now? Yeah. All right, tell Wait. me when you start recording. Uh, I forgot to set the time sign now, something. Uh... Okay, now. Is it recording now? Yeah. Hello, you two. This is Hail to the King OO. An ultimate Super X. Alright. Last time we tried to do a history of the Sonic movie and it failed, so I deleted it off my YouTube to so redo it this entire thing because I think it was awful. Like, one of the parts was cut out, to cut out and we went off a way too freaking long talking about it. So we're going to rush through this whole Sonic movie history quickly, so you guys can we can get this over with. Any thoughts? Uh... Nothing on top of my head at the moment. Alright, let's just go, okay, let's just say we start back, okay. Here's where we're going to start off at, we're going to start back in like 1993, I think. I think it was like Daddy 3, where MGM was going to make a Sonic movie. Like, MGM bought the rights to make a Sonic movie back in 1993 called... And it was going to be called Sonic's Wonders of the World, where, where Sonic breaks out... Well, it wasn't developed in 1993. It was starting off like they bought the rights in 1993, and they got the rights to develop in like 1996 or 1995, or whatever the freak, you know, you get the point. Basically, it was about to be this plot of Sonic jumping out of the TV screen, or whatever, by some machine that Josh's dad made, where he accidentally hooked it up to the little thing, I think that's what happened, and Sonic jumped out of the screen due to the supercomputer glitch, or whatever the freak it was. And Sonic comes out of the TV, loses his powers, and tries to be more of a mentor to Josh, if you want to read the full synopsis, you can go ahead and read it. You can just Google it, because, let me tell you, this movie sounded awful. Like, it sounded so freaking awful. Like, the characterization of Sonic in that version sucked. Him losing his powers in the real world sounds awful. And him hanging out with Josh, like, it's, it just sounds like a Sonic X... It sounds like Casper's Spirit in the beginning, but... But it just sounds awful, like... Like, the freaking whole idea of the Chaos Emeralds having this freaking energy power, and Sonic's like, I have a little taste, Jaws, for you. And then when Sonic gives it to Josh, he's like, you're not a lab, you're not, you can't handle the power of the Emeralds, Josh. It just sounds so stupid. Like, that doesn't even sound like a Sonic-type character at all. It just, it just doesn't fit, fit well to me. So, anyways, this movie by Trilogy Entertainment and MGM just sounds completely awful but it had production issues because of the cancelization of Sonic Extreme and the characterization of Sonic Josh it just sounded awful like Robotnik coming out of the real world and Sonic coming out of the real world like we don't see any fun stuff or any cool stuff all we see is just a bunch of boring typical 90s kids BS and would you believe that even some people out there 
believe that this version sounded better than the new Sonic movie, which I <laughs> highly disagree, because at least the Sonic movie looks stupid and fun. This movie just sounds like a generic 90s kids movie that we've seen to death, like, again, Casper, Fat Albert, you know, those type of movies. Am I... Well, yeah, this had very bad production issues, and let me tell you, it's probably the worst sounding way it was live action Sonic movie, in my honest opinion. Any thoughts? Yeah. It might have been a probably a little guilty pleasure for me, uh, probably anyways, but it was still kind of a little bit kind of weird and terrible. I mean, it would probably be fine if, like, if you're a Sonic fan, but it'll probably be one of those movies you just pop in once every five years or so because you're a Sonic fan. Yeah. But not a movie you watch over and over and over again like the OBA or the freaking cartoons or anything like that. Hell, even Sonic X was more enjoyable than this. Yeah, that's something I do kind of only watch like every five years or so. Now, I do admit though, Josh might be a better character than Chris though. Could be wrong. I still think Chris is probably my, the worst Sonic character of all time. And the fact that he gets way too much focus in Sonic X is the reason why I hate Sonic X with a living passion, because it's the biggest disappointment I've ever seen. I, I'm i one of those people that don't really hate Sonic X. I do it. I enjoy it. Uh, when it Sonic gets X, good. okay, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Sonic X would have been a great cartoon. They got Sonic's characterization down perfectly with Jason cocky voice the, the story sounds pretty good but the main issue is that it focused way too much on Chris yes that is no my one, issues I repeat bit. no one gave a freak about it. all because eh, we, can't, we gotta have a character kids can identify with what kind of kid would care about identifying with someone like as a kid like I'm gonna be perfectly real I didn't watch Sonic X so I could identify with Chris or relate to him. I watched it because I wanted to see Sonic say something funny and cool while doing awesome stuff. Not a bunch of freaking boring humans. Same man, that's the only reason why I watched Sonic X. Like, I love scenes like when Sonic was running with that cheetah, dragging him around, like, 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 like oh, you're faster than me, and then he picks him up and starts raking him around, run, scaring the crap out of the cheetah. I love those scenes like that but too bad those scenes are tarnished when the next scene is just basically 10 minutes of Chris talking about his freaking life and how it sucks because his parents aren't around or something stupid like that or him at school doing boring stuff and then out of the we go to Robotnik and then randomly some other characters that nobody cares like the freaking cops or the freaking scientists like no one cares about these characters granted if like Sonic I mean Sonic is not a type, like a Dragon Ball Z type of series like that. It's always meant to be focused on one thing, Sonic and his friends, period. Not some random kid, not some stupid crap like that, no boring scenes. I hate the show, I really hate it, I still think it's worse than Sonic Boom. I hate Sonic Boom, but I at least give Sonic Boom credit, at least it focuses on Sonic and his friends. Chris, Sonic X though, it doesn't focus remotely on the... Sonic and Chris's relationship. It just focused on Chris and Chris only while he sometimes hangs out with Amy and Tails. That's it. No Sonic and Tails relationship, no Sonic and Chris relationship, just Chris only, and he's probably the worst character in an anime. Period. Yeah. I mean, okay. as, I do enjoy Sonic X for what it is. But I do not care for Chris, though. <laughs> I do not care for him at all, as well. Uh, I think Chris would have been a bit more of an interesting character if they gave him, like, a personality like they kind of did with um, Ty from Dragon Ball in the English dub. I think that might have made him more interesting. But... To be perfectly honest, I would have found the show way more interesting. If Chris basically had the same personality as Sonic, like the exact same, yeah. with Jason Griffith playing both characters, then be, I'd be great with this. It'd be interesting if he did have like a similar personality and maybe see them button heads <laughs> time to time. Or 
even better, have similar personalities, both with the same voice by Jason Griffin, and both of them going on wild, wacky adventures. None of this crap where Chris is at home with the scientist or any of this other BS. Just basically Sonic and Chris go on wacky adventures. That's what I'd rather see. But no, 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 let's focus on this. I'm sorry, I can't stand it. I'm, a, I'm like, I mean, I can handle slow burns, but every episode is a slow burn. <laughs> Anyways, but this is the history of Sonic TV shows, or Sonic Media for that matter. Like, we'll do a separate video on that later on down the line, but this is the Sonic movie history. But I just had to get my rant from Sonic X out of the way because I just can't stand Sonic X. My personal opinion, if I have Sonic cartridge, I recommend where you just want to see Sonic doing awesome stuff. No, like, no personality changing. No freaking human protagonists getting more screen time or any of that. I highly recommend the epicness of Sonic, Sad AM, and Avengers Sonic the Hedgehog. Those are the two shows I recommend you guys watch. No, uh, no underground. Underground's good too, but not as good as AOSDH and Sad AM. Those things are like god tier, in my opinion. True. I do like I do enjoy Underground for what it is, but it's kind of like not as good it's as the first two. It's nostalgic for me because I watched Underground. I watched Underground a crap ton, even more than Sonic X when I was like a kid. Because I used to rent the DVDs at the video store, and let me tell you, I had way more fun watching Sonic Underground. I loved Sonic Underground. I loved it. And I just find it funny that Sonic had a singing voice by Double D of all people. <laughs> Any moment now, I'm expecting to hear Sonic do some scientific crap, or talk about how something's unsanitary, or even stupider, like him just start, like just out of the, no, I want to hear Sonic scream, like in the show, I'd rather hear Sonic scream, I feel the adrenaline in it me! <laughs> something like that, but more before he fights. And all you hear is man going, Sonic, Sonic, calm down, will ya? It's just a toy from Canada, jeez. How embarrassing. I'm not gonna lie, that would've been hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and ironically enough, the, voice, the singing voice of Sonic went on to do Martin from Martin Mystery. Which, ironically enough, when, when I was little, I used to think Martin reminded me of a lot like a Sonic-type character, so I think we come full circle when it comes to that crap. But yeah, yeah. Um... Well, yeah, this isn't the history of Sonic the show, so my bad for taking too long on that. But let's just get to the next thing. Oh, yeah. Right. Way over so, way yeah, MGM back. had a Sonic movie that's called Sonic Borders of the World, and that fell through. If you want to read more about it, look it up on Google, but let me tell you, it is awful. Like, really awful. Or, even better, go watch the video by a man named... If you want, if you want the entire plot of the Sonic movie history, look no further then go by the guy named Channel Pop. He's my recommendation if you want to hear about Sonic Waters of the World or any of the other movies I'm bringing up tonight. If you really don't want to feel like reading articles on freaking Wikipedia or Google or whatever the freak. Yeah, I highly recommend you go check out Channel Pop if you want to see what happened with the Sonic movie a bit more in detail. Right, so, yeah, they were trying to move that deal to DreamWorks as well, and that fell through, so Warders of the World was officially canceled. And thank God, because, let me tell you, Warders of the World sound like crap. But, oh, you thought that was bad? How about Ken Pender's idea for a Sonic movie? And, oh, we'll get to Ken Pender soon enough, because we got a special rant for him on how much of a hypocrite he is. You know, 
I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ken Pendle's the dude that did the 2000s comic books. Well, not 2000s, like we'll 90s. We'll get to him. We'll get to him in a little bit. So, yeah. Ken Pendle's Sonic movie was going to, like, it didn't really have a plot for it. Like, like there's not really a well-written, like, no plot from it on the internet yet. Like, they started off, they and her started off wanting to make a Sonic that AM season 3. That fell through because Ken Pendrick lied about him and said he wants to do, and Ken Pendrick wanted to do a Sonic movie his own way instead. Actually, no, no, Ben Hurst was trying to, actually, my bad, it wasn't a C3, it was a Stat AM movie, but that fell through. So, thanks a lot, Ken. Thanks a freaking bunch. Okay, so what are the, so Ken Pendrick was going to be having an idea where Mobius is completely destroyed and Roboticization would have been a much more gruesome procedure as shown in the cartoons of comedy. It, oh, gruesome procedure. Oh, we're going to talk about it. It's hypocrisy soon enough. <laughs> oh, I am so ready for that. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, they're going to show that. And let me tell you, there's some picture out there where you see Snively basically... Like basically experimenting on a rat, which is probably going to be disturbing. Mobius getting blown up when Sonic is up in space with Sally crying on with Sonic, which looks completely freaking stupid. And we just see like two Sonics probably freaking plot about that too, which sounds completely awful in my opinion. Like just what the freak? And this last picture featuring the whole cast of each other. All I'm saying right now is this concept art is some of the worst concept art I've ever seen. But like I said, if you want to look up more of this, go check out Channel Pups' channel because he does the more justice than I've ever could. Now we're gonna to get to the next thing. Um, I think I think there might have been another Sonic movie in the works. But I don't remember. I think I don't think there was anything in 2007. I could be wrong though, but you get the idea. I think afterwards it was Sony trying to pitch something, try to make a Sonic movie before the league came out. But you get the idea. You get the idea. Like, the whole history behind it was completely freaking. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. Um, yeah. Yeah, basically, afterwards, Sony. There was also a fan film came out by that guy who made that dumb Sonic 4 video, but again, I'm, we're not going to go through that, because it is a fan film. Not really a freaking movie that's official, so again, watch Channel Pump if you want to look for that. But yeah, like the one now we're going to the, the beat of this entire history. The whole real Sonic movie production that has been in production hell for the past few years, I guess, before Parabout decided to make it. Yeah, ever since 2013, there was a leaked domain name for a Sonic movie. Oh yeah, I forgot that. I tell you. What is your thoughts about the Ken Penders Sonic movie thing going on with it? Yeah, I noticed. Um... This probably again, I don't want to probably kind of still enjoy a little, but I'm still kind of happy that the was not made because it would have been a very, very odd, dark version of Sonic. Probably kind of interested to see it how sounds better. It, it sounds better than Wonders of the World. Yes, that's right. I think that's better than Wonders of the World, in my honest opinion. Because at least, again, this has something that goes along something from the games or the TV show, but but it is still still pretty bad. I mean, it's something I really kind of want, wish I could able to check out, but at the same time, I am still annoyed that he did lie about that, oh dude. Anyways, let's get to the history of the meat of this entire thing. The whole Sonic movie from Sony. Now, Sony's Sonic movie was going to be darker and edgier, 
I think, as far as I know, and was going to be PG-13, unlike the PG movie we had now, which I have a theory of, but I'm not going to announce it yet, about why it got a PG rating instead of a PG-13. Why I think it did. But I'm not going to announce it yet. Anyways, let's talk about the history of the Sony movies. Now, the Sony movie, though, is... It's a bit more interesting because this right here was the entire idea of how this movie is going to be like six. Yeah, domain names. Okay, so in on December third, twenty thirteen, Sony, like Sony, Sony Pictures leaked. Like there was a leak from Sony Pictures that there was three domain names for a Sonic movie called SonicHedgehogMovie.com. You get the idea. Yeah, the registrations were reported on the Sonic Stadium 7th of December 2013. But neither Sony nor Sega confirmed the existence of a proposed film at the time. And Tracking Board in March 2014 said it was going to have a receive a Dark Knight treatment. Could you imagine that crap Sonic receiving a Dark Knight treatment? <laughs> Boy, that would have been awful. Are you going to see Sonic go to a bond and going, WHERE ARE THEY? Like, something stupid like that. Wait, what is we gonna go with a dark Bale knight as freaking Shadow? Which again? Yeah, that, that, that. I mean, again, uh... I don't mind if the Sonic series do kind of take a dark turn, but... Yeah, if you want to change up... If you're going to, uh... Make the kid go like a 180 and change up his whole personality into something like that, then yeah, no. And thank God that didn't happen either. Anyways, there was a there was a reveal in 2014 that Sonic the Hedgehog and his eventual successor films will be a separate continuity from the Sonic Boom continuity. Thank God, because I really don't want a Sonic Boom movie. Oh, I forgot about the Sonic Boom movie. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, that's right. I'm yeah, it that. probably would have been boring and plotless, so thank God if that didn't happen. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't like Sonic Boom. I really don't. So, yeah. Anyway, Van Robichok stated that the production team is aiming for a PG-13 rating. And I'm just going to go ahead and say my theory on why you got a PG rating instead of a PG-13. I don't think anything was cut down at all. I don't think anything was less violent or anything cut down. I think what he meant was they were aiming for a PG-13, but a soft PG-13. Not a freaking, you know, full-blown PG-13 that you've seen in every other adaptation like Ninja Turtles. It's more of a soft PG-13. So what happened was, in my opinion, that they think it was going to end up being PG-13. But then when everything was shot and done, and they showed it to the MPAA, it just amounted to an extremely hard PG rating, hence the violence and the brief mild language being in the description. Yeah, which is very shocking to me. But that's just my opinion. Because when it was, because the reason why I say that is because in the UK, the Sonic movie passed with a PG rating uncut. So nothing was cut down. So I think that it was just aiming for a PG-13, but when it went to the MPAA, it just ended up with a hard PG instead because nothing seemed too harsh for a PG, PG-13 PG rating or a soft one at that. So they decided, screw it, we're just going to give it a PG rating because it has brief language and violence. To me, that's my theory. What do you think? That's a possibility. I'm surprised it gave a PG rating, it, since it has all that. Because normally, uh, normally these days, PG is basically G. Exactly. But movies like Incredibles 2, Detective Pikachu, and frickin', um, trying to think. There was another movie that was, like, edgy for a PG rating now as well, but I forgot. There was a third one that I'm trying to remember, but... So far, it was Incredibles 2 and freaking got the old one. Of 
Incredibles 2, Detective Pikachu. Yeah, those movies were pretty hard, were, were pretty much like a medium to hard PG rating when I saw them in theaters. Like, I was shocked that Incredibles 2 said words like, damn it, it for hell. <laughs> I think it was two. It's been a while since I've seen it. Yeah. But yeah, I think Sonic is going for more of the Rango route, where it's PG, but that, but that doesn't mean it won't be edgy. Yeah, I think the MPAA is now more chilled out with the PG rating again, in my opinion. So that's why it just amounted to only a PG rating instead of a PG-13. Heck, I think Sonic, the Sonic movie might be edgier than Detective Pikachu because despite the casual, like, mild language Detective Pikachu had, its description does not have mild language in it. Like, at all. It was just for fantasy violence set on the back. That's true. And P Detective Pikachu, at least... So like... I think Sonic might be harder than... Detective Pikachu, when you think about it. That's true. You know. So what did they do? Is Sonic gonna say ass once or something like that? Maybe. Or the dreaded shit word. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine that? Like Sonic just jumps over a rock and he goes, "Oh shit!" <laughs> <laughs> like once. Oh shit! <laughs> I hope that happens. I mean, come on. Because PG ratings are allowed for like a few S words, but not a lot. Come on, make a reference to that Sonic X episode or something like that. But, anyways, um. But like I said, this movie's gonna be probably a bit more hardcore than a Detective Pikachu. It might be a, it might push the boundaries in the PG rating a bit more than Detective Pikachu. I could be wrong though. Heck, even the previews that people were discussing on Reddit, where they said it was pretty good, said the movie was a hard PG at best. Well, that's always a good sign. So that's my theory. It was aiming for a PG-13. But it somehow made it out with the hard PG, despite what they wrote, thinking it was going to get a PG-13. Anyways, let's finish the, the production cycle so we have this over with and we can give our thoughts on what we think about the movie thus far. So anyways, it was revealed on 2014, they were aiming for a PG-13 rating, and the Hollywood Reporter that Tim Miller, who left directing Deadpool 2 due to creative differences, has been hired as an executive producer for the film, and Jeff Fowler will assume the directorial, du directorial duties. You know what? I am so glad those two were a part of the Sonic movie, because let's be honest, if they had gone with anybody else, they wouldn't have done it as well as they did, because they probably would have got somebody like Michael Bay or M. Night Shyamalan and make a movie entirely boring or something stupid like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, with Michael Bay, at least my might have like script. a lot of action, though. Oh yeah. Also, Patrick Casey and Josh Miller are also preferred to write the script. Let me tell you something. Thank God for those people, because let me tell you, those guys are way better to pontificate as far as I know. Why don't they get those two guys to be the writers for the those that duo to be the writers for the Sonic games instead of you know freaking pontificate? I don't know. Yeah, if you don't know who Pontiff Graf were, they worked on, like, Dole and the Insatiable on FX. You know, the cartoon. That a lot of people liked but got cancelled. I think I'm, like, willing to check that out later on down the line and see how well their writing is on the show. Because I heard it was a great show despite its cancellation. Huh. When will I get canceled then? It's because it's Fox, of course. They cancel everything. Ah. Uh. 
Yeah, remember Futurama? Yeah, which that's been canceled more than once. Family Guy got canceled twice. Yeah, Fox is really poor when it comes to animation. American Dad got canceled as well, but moved to TBS. But anyway, let's just go ahead and continue on. Yeah, Bam Robin Chalks was going to do it before being replaced with Pepsi Casey and Josh Miller. I'm glad they, as much as I think, as much as Bam Robin Chucks is a huge Sonic fan, I kind of like the writing style of Patrick Casey and Josh Miller. So far in this trailer. Because they're really well known for doing cool comedies, like, again, Golden the Unsafable. And I think their humor is on point when it comes to a Sonic movie, so I think that duo is perfect for the job. So far, I think the writing for the Sonic movie is brilliant, in my honest opinion. What do you think? It does seem that way so far, which I have to see the movie itself to be 100% confirm that. It's probably, it's extremely low. The bar is set pretty much at a medium bar for me. Not too high, I want my hopes too high, but it's at a medium bar, higher than before. Also, Jeff Bauer was going to direct the movie even back when it was at Sony. <laughs> I, let me tell you why I'm glad it moved from Sony to Paramount, because if it was still at Sony, they would have had their dumb product placement. They probably would have kept it in New York. They probably would have done a bunch of stuff worse than Paramount ever could. Probably. So, thank God for Paramount. The reason why Sony didn't produce the movie was because of the 2014 hack, and a lot of the new executives were brought to oversee the project in like the direction the movie was taken. New executives? Oh, thank God it didn't. Because let's be honest, if those new executives had done anything to it, we would have had another Smurfs on our hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be edgy, it wouldn't be cool, and it wouldn't be funny like the trailers are showing off. Oh, and here's my favorite. Sega and Van clashed over Dr. Robotnik's name. Van wanted him to be named as Dr. Robotnik as it would be easier for American audience to swallow and be more intimidating, but Sega wanted to be Eggman. Again, this is why I hate Sega of Japan so much. They always try to tarnish something because it isn't to their liking. Every time. And we get a worse product because of it. Thank God. They stood their ground and made a robot. And Van also clashed a lot with the unnamed Sony executive, most likely Amy Pascal, who probably would have ruined the movie. What do you think about that? Yeah, most likely. It also said it could be fake, though, but according to the Sony hack, as what originally had stayed more close to its games, and there would have been a combination of Sonic 1 and Sonic Adventure in terms of story. Yeah, that's Actually, the movie's already a freaking plot that's sort of like Sonic 1 and Sonic Adventure right now, if we're being honest. What do you think? Yeah, that's what I heard. This is supposed to be real similar to, uh... Um, she's Sonic conventional because I heard it was going to have chaos and some woman named Madonna. Right now, I think it's just as much like that, like that. Back to my point. Um, the leak is real because there many of the early plot synopses were doing the movie that talks about a casino and a lead of male and female role. Well, the casino was cut out, probably replaced with the bar. Also, how would that work? It was going to be called Sonic Casino Nights, the working title, and now we have a cop and his wife confirmed in the story. 
Also, because Sonic had a, Sony had a different vision for the film Paradise, I did. Sony's idea was to make a more darker origin story for the characters. Paramount seems to be taking a comedy adventure family film, considering it has comedic actors like Jim Carrey, Tika, so for I'm going to be perfectly honest, I am glad we didn't see Sony's version, because I did not want to see another Ninja Turtles out of Sonic, like a very extremely dark story that doesn't really work well. What do you think? I don't mind a darker origin, but with Sony, uh, I'm not sure I trust that with that with them. I prefer the light-hearted comedy adventure of Paramount's going with, with some dark moments. It's way better. Yeah, I do like the Paramount's, what, what they're doing is a lot better than Sony. Also, speaking of which, I really hope there's like... Like, if you pre-order the Blu-ray, you get a VHS release of the Sonic movie. Ooh. That's pretty cool. I kind of hope they do that. Because Bumblebee had something like that, but it was only for an April Fool's joke. But I hope the Sonic movie does that and take it for real. Because I'm going to be perfectly honest, I would love to own a VHS copy of the Sonic movie. Same here. To me, that's the true way to make it feel with shit to me. Anyways, um, when Paramount got the rights to the film, they completely redid the script of the story. Here's the supposedly early draft of the film's plot. Sonic is a teenage tearaway rebel living in the forest near Green Hills, Montana. He was mutated by experiments by Dr. Robotnik, along with several other animals that he used to go and now live in peace. Tails and Knuckles are mentioned in the script, but it can be affirmed that they're around. Dr. Robotnik's experiments extend around ancient golden Incan rings, which the animals took with them as they escaped. Sonic is restless and wants to see the world. He's caught speeding in Green Hills Town and he's arrested by the sheriff, Tom. He becomes a viral sensation online and draws the attention of Dr. Robotnik who comes to Free Hills to get back to Reeds. Despite Tom trying to protect Sonic, he is, he is captured by Robotnik and taken to government lab. Tom is able to break inside with the help of Tom, locals who befriended Sonic, and together they free him. The last stand takes place in Green Hills as Robotnik launches an assault with gadgets and robots he created. In full, traps laid by the town's folk and Sonic, Robotnik is blown up, survives, and then arrested for illegal spirit and double blood. Sonic is hails as a hero, but rather than wanting to see the world, he decides he wants to stay and protect his home Green Hill. Ends with him running down a highway. Thank God Paramount fixed that leak draft, but let me tell you, that wasn't that good. Yeah, it was linked to that. I'm not, I'm, I'm not liking that idea at all. <laughs> I prefer the newer Paramount. I mean, this was still Paramount. Well, I think they just redid it because I think it, yeah, this ain't that good. Let's just make it a road trip. And that's exactly what they did. Like, they think it take place in the city instead of the boring small town. Sonic, and guess what? Sonic doesn't get captured in this version. Oh, no. I think it's Tom this time that gets captured. Yeah, that's definitely a bit more interesting. I like how they did it with Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I think this time... Instead of Sonic getting captured, noticing by the trailer, I think it's Tom is the one who gets captured this time. I think, anyways. Judging I mean, by thing, how things are going. It seems like Kills is getting captured. This always seems like a huge trope in these live action stuff. It happened with the Chipmunks. It happened with the Transformers. It happened with Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles of all people. I think Sonic is trying to be like the anti version of those movies now. The only way, only one out of the three I see, I can see probably work is probably Chipmunks and Smurfs, but Transformers and Ninja Turtles? Yeah, no, that's that's stupid. I am so glad they changed the plot that because if they kept that plot, that would have been a bit, that would have been a bad climax. And have Sonic being take place in Green Hills the entire time, I don't like even. I like the idea where Sonic gets out of his own freaking world using rings way more than that. Hey, maybe that's inspired. Well, we'll discuss all right. We'll discuss our thoughts about the new trailers afterwards. When someone asked if he goes fast in the film, the leak refund this. He goes fast a few times, but doesn't read very exciting. 
Well, he's dipping down a few highways or leaving a room and popping back with a chili dog, which happens once. I think he did improve this. I think so, too. Because we've seen a lot more speed I, think they realized, I just realized they probably were thinking, what the heck are we doing? We gotta change this. This, this is bad. What if this was Dan Robichock's version of the movie? If so, then thank God for Pat Casey and Josh Miller, because they approved it. Most definitely, because we see Sonic zipping around a lot more in the, in the trails. And heck, we see everybody do a bunch of funny life and acting crazy and wild and having a great time. This version, however, just sounds like, I want to see the world. Sonic in the movies, I was like, I'm running a ball, motherfucker! <laughs> it's like comparing a freaking AM hey, Sonic to, I'm on crack cocaine without the fun tonight! You know, it's like comparing those two. I don't think we get to see Sonic riding a bull in that crappy version. Which already sucks because of that. Oh, I forgot to mention there's a couple of oblique of references in the game. Robotnik has divided America up into zones and a map at his lab. He actually says, I need to back up to the Green Hill Zone at one point. Sonic speeds past the signpost making it spin around. There's supposed to be references of spinning at the end of the levels. When someone says how close they threw to the games, they're fun. The way it read, it was meant for people who remember playing Sonic years ago but not get much else. The references are general as you get. There are Sonic, there are rings, the Green Hills. It doesn't adhere anything from the storyline of the games or comments or anything else. To be honest, it felt like an Alvin and the Chipmunks or Smurfs movie. Okay, I'm still glad they changed that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to think that was either the Sony plot. Yeah, I think that was the Sony plot. I don't think Paramount had anything to do with that. Because it had the darker origin story, which is Robotnik experimenting with Sonic. And it sounds way more boring. And it sounds more like a typical Sony movie rather than a Paramount flick when you think about it. I wouldn't be surprised if that was Amy Pascal's idea for a Sonic movie, but then they just decided, you know what, we're leaving because of this. I don't think it was the freaking leak that got them to leave. I think they just left because they think this is a bad idea and it'll ruin the movie. That and Sony was hard up on money so they could not afford a little uh, bomb. What do you think? Do you think my theory is correct? Possibly. It makes more sense than, oh, just a leak. No, I think it's Sony trying to sabotage this movie to be more like their other crappy movies. It was announced that Yachty, yeah, we get the point. Yeah, they acquired the film rights for Sony. They did a production deal with Paramount because of it. Despite the dick change, the studio's structure staff remained employed and moved to Paramount as well. This is not the first time Paramount and Sega have crossed paths. From 1969 to 1983, they were both sub of Gulf and Western Industries. 2018, there is a film that moved to Paramount. Yeah, we get the point here. We all know how that plays out. Junkie XL did it. Yeah, we all know how it went down. Yeah, there was originally talks with Charlie Day being Sonic and freaking Chris Pratt as Tom. Or Paul Rudd as Tom, or Paul Rudd as Sonic. Or Josh Gad as Sonic or Tom Holland. To be honest, in that list, right, and freaking what's his face, too, was in the Ololi Island. Yeah, what's his face? Oh, I keep forgetting his name, but yeah, you get Andy Samberg. To be honest, the best guy in the pit in that list before Ben Schwartz came was probably Charlie Day. He's probably the closest that would have been the Sonic compared to everyone else, in my opinion. What Maybe. do you think? Maybe I don't know actors by their names. <laughs> I mean, Charlie Day, because it's always Sonny, did it? No, Josh Gad would have been a terrible Sonic, if we're being honest. If you're wondering who Josh Gad is, he's the fat guy from Pixels and the snowman from Frozen. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, he would have been a terrible Sonic if we're being honest. Tom Holland, he played Spider-Man in the new movies. He would have been an awful Sonic. Like in the Sony movies or the Homecoming? No, Paramount. Oh. Uh, this is the Sonic movie. Well, I mean, you said Spider-Man movies. No, I'm talking about, no, I said Tom Holland. Yeah, it's Tom Holland from the Marvel Studios movies. Oh, okay. You know, like Endgame, Infinity War, Homecoming. Oh, okay. Yeah, he would have been a terrible Sonic of being real here. Andy Samberg, though? What do, what do you think, before I say anything else? Uh, what he done? Spider-Man Homecoming. So oh. He played Spider-Man in that one. I, I don't know. I have not seen one of the Spider-Man ones he did besides Homecoming. I think he just... I think he's, he's way too young to be Sonic. He plays... Less of a fast, talky, cocky son of a gun, but more of a boring person. So, yet again, he's definitely bad on the list. Andy Samberg and Paul Rudd would have done alright. Chris Pratt was going to be Sonic 2. Those three, those four would have been alright. But all of them were rejected. But then Ben Schwartz came. And then he brought possibly the greatest Sonic performance I've ever heard in my life. Go see the trailer if you see what We'll get the trailer in a minute. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so they brought Ben Schwartz in, and they loved Ben Schwartz and Sonic. <laughs> so they decided, you know what, we're going to have Ben Schwartz and Sonic. And that's what they did. Anyways, that was the history of the Sonic movie. You know, the rest is history. James Marsden is going to be Tom. You got Jim Carrey's Robotnik, Tim K Kika Sumter, yada yada. You get the point. Junkie XL did the soundtrack. Anyways, final thoughts on the history? Yeah, it's kind of hard to believe it took this long for us to even get a Sonic movie. Not counting the OVA. The OVA is way too short. If I'm being honest. Yeah, it's not wish... really a Sonic movie. It was only 55 minutes long. Yeah, it would have been interesting if we did got something out of that, though. Yeah, all those movies and the plot sounded completely terrible. And right now, I am so happy with the final version we got. Now, our thoughts on the Sonic movie trailer. The first one, you know, with the bad design, like, it was a terrible trailer. Looking yeah. back, it was a terrible trailer. I remember being excited for the movie despite the design, but looking back, it is an awful trailer. Yeah, I know you was kind of... The music was unfitting. I know a little back uh, when you heard about they're going to throw in Gangs of Paradise, you was kind of somewhat excited because you thought that might have been fitting. And now, after we've seen it, you were like, yeah, maybe it wasn't fitting after all. Exactly. I prefer the Ramones over that. Which is what they chose. The Ramones was free thought. And there was some... Um, speaking of which, there, according to the Sonic Madlibs book, Sonic is very into... A trivia note. According to the Sonic Madlibs note, Sonic is very into 80s and 90s music. Uh-huh. <laughs> one note considers that he... Like, one thing he notes is... One song he does love is Elton John's "Look Breaking My Heart," but obviously that that ain't gonna be the only song they're gonna be playing in the movie. It could just be for the book. They probably play put something else, but you know I think Elton John is pretty good for Sonic. 
Yeah. I mean, I do like Hell John. I think he's pretty good. He's Lion King, Colorado, but he did some pretty good rock, like, you know, 70s rock as well. So, Elton John's pretty good. Obviously, there's going to be other choices. Like, again, there's that little hidden Easter egg where Sonic has a Van Halen record in his shed. So, obviously, there's going to probably be a Van Halen song in there. But, again, we're talking about the first trail. We're kind of getting off topic here. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. We're just giving you off the trip, yeah. So, we'll talk about other Mad Lib stuff when we get to the, our final our, our final thoughts. Anyways, our first trailer. We first see Sonic zipping through the freaking like, the woods or something. With overdramatic music playing in the freaking background. Then he jumps into his little shed, bouncing on a bounce pad, putting a good set tape in the tape player. And then all you hear is Gangster's Paradise and him going, Can I go fast? Looking all serious and angry for whatever reason, which is unfitting because there's no threat going on. Man, he, he. I mean, when they did a close up to his face, at first they didn't like, yeah, he doesn't look that bad. And then when they kind of did the whole zoom out, with, we, we actually see his whole face on that eh, meow moment. Then I was like, eh. He looks kind of awful. <laughs> yeah, that looked terrible. That was just the only bad thing for the trailer. Oh no, it showed way too much of robotic in that trailer. Not enough of Sonic and Tom and how their de develop character development's gonna work. Which I honestly don't think. There's not you. really enough to us to know about this movie, in my opinion. Which, honestly, I don't think anyone would want to see more Sonic in that trail. I did like one joke, though. That look at this, it took 9 million steps today. I do love that and joke. That, that was oh, awesome. Is that all you got? <laughs> I love that, too. <laughs> I added those in my special Mario Kart 8 mod pack. <laughs> as well, those two lines. I need to download that sometime. Yeah, if you know how to um, use SD caffeine. Which is what I use. Took a bunch of hard work to get that crap done. But yeah, yeah, the summing up, that trailer was freaking awful. Like, there was not enough Sonic. Too much robot, Nick. We didn't see enough dynamic with Tom and Sonic, so we don't know how it's going to end up being like. There's not really much of anything to know what's going on with this movie. I think my fr a friend of mine, Fishery, named uh, this design Sonic Creepy Gremlin Fuck. <laughs> no, that's what I called him. I called him Gremlin the Hedgehog. Oh, yeah. That was my nickname. <laughs> he was called Gremlin the Hedgehog. Oh, that's right. Because he looked like a freaking like mixture between Ben Schwartz's face a creepy gremlin from the movie Gremlins and a rat painted blue all mixed together in a freaking blender and you got freaking gremlin Sonic. So yeah, after the trailer was released, it was faced with a, with a huge amount of backlash. Like, it was so bad. Even people who would defend, normally defend other stuff was like, no, no, that was awful. Like, even I... Like, at first, I was like, oh, this looks pretty cool, I can't wait to see it. But then, the moment, but then I was thinking further, and I realized, you know, the trailer wasn't really as good as I think it is. For one, for starters, Sonic doesn't really look like Sonic. It didn't show enough about what's going on. And it was just overall awful for our first trailer. And then after seeing that new trailer, it looked way worse in comparison. But we'll get to that. So... After the amount of backlash, after the amount of crap it got, because of the design and the trailer itself, Jeff Fowler, the director of the movie, was probably during an argument with Paramount saying, like, I got a theory that I don't think Jeff Fowler had anything to do with that crappy design. I yeah, think because from what we got, it was Paramount's decision to make that, make that design. 
It was not the directors. It was not Sega. It was Paramount because they thought it would have been better. Uh, would connect with audience battle. And hey, let me tell you, I think they might have been right because there were some posts out there saying, "Oh, city folks, way too unfitting for the real world like that." Yeah, but honestly, there's not enough people that think that way. Thank God, because there was, I would have lost faith in humanity if they thought that freaking rat looks better than that thing. And to me, that is not a design I expect in a cartoonish meets live action world. And to me, it just takes me out of it. I mean, if you think like about Sonic it. Like, Sonic isn't supposed to look like the freaking 2014 Ninja Turtles. He's meant to be like a funny, cartoonish, in a live action world. That's what I wanted to see. Yeah. But sadly, it... I was disappointed. And I thought I would never ever get that vision. I thought all I'm gonna stick with is that stupid version, and that's all I'm gonna get. No cool cartoonishness, nothing fun, just another sad attempt at a Hollywood adaptation like other movies. Until the date that Jeff Fowler said he's gonna redesign Sonic. Which even then, I was kinda uh, like. Uh, give me a sec here. May 2nd, 2019. Get, wait, 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 wait. I have to do something. And he announced a couple days after 